don't know if anybody's surprised by this, but the reaction to the campaign for Modern Warfare 3 has been objectively awful. Essentially, everybody has said that it is bad. But again, is it really that much of a surprise? That's what we'll talk about today. If you like the content I do here, consider subscribing. Let's go ahead and get into it. You know, this was not even supposed to be Modern Warfare 3. First of all, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say that. I'm not going to beat a dead horse on this one, but it was supposed to be DLC from Modern Warfare 2. Now, I played Modern Warfare 2 a lot, and although, you know, there were some aspects of it I really didn't like, I liked the guns, I liked the uh, gunsmith, I thought all that stuff was good. Al Mazara was decent, but, you know, they slowed the movement down, so I just learned to deal with it. I mean, but anytime you make the map bigger, and then you considerably slow the movement down from the previous COD, you're going to have people complaining about it. Now, is that a reason to come out with an entirely brand new game? I don't think so, but they did. Now, this is the first year where two Modern Warfares have come out back to back. Normally, you have a little bit of a gap in between those things. And I thought that was, that was a fantastic idea. We don't need to Call of Duty every single year. The base and what you already have there works well enough. Just add on to that for another year and boom, give yourself a year or maybe even two where you come out with a brand new game and fresh ideas, like real fresh ideas. Now, I want to hear y'all's opinion after this and tell me if I'm wrong or if you agree with me, wh whichever way you fall on this. I definitely want to hear from y'all. But let's first look at the campaign. It's three hours long, you know, three, three and a half hours. Now, you're most of us were complaining about six to eight hours being a short campaign, but for a Call of Duty game, a bunch of cinematic, you know, set pieces and all this kind of stuff, I felt like it was fairly good, right? Not only are the cinematic set pieces kind of tossed out in this one for the most part, but you're also half the length of what a normal Call of Duty campaign will be. So that right off the rip is no good. I've seen that there's a bunch of Steam players that want to refund the game after they've seen how awful the campaign was. Um, you know, this happens every year, probably with every single game, but not to this extent because not every game is as popular as Call of Duty. So not only do you have a really short campaign, like I said, half the length of a normal campaign, but they've also taken a lot of those cinematic pieces out and replace them with more open world missions. And this has been received just as well as the short three hour campaign, meaning it hasn't been received well at all. And so people have a right to be upset about that. Now, there are some that say, hey, let's wait for the full release and that's when you can really judge it. Well, yeah, technically you would be right if this was a brand new game. Like, if nobody knew, like, let's say this was X Defiant, right? And people are already judging it right off the rip. Then you could say, okay, let's wait for the whole thing and see. But we know what this is going to be, right? From the beta, we know the movement has been fixed. We know there's going to be additional guns. But we also know it uses the same exact UI as Modern Warfare 2. We know there's going to be a new Warzone map. And we also know that the multiplayer is just like 16 reworked Modern Warfare 2 maps. So we're getting Modern Warfare 2 maps in our Modern Warfare 3 release. And it's the laziest thing I've ever seen. I swear they make the same video every year where, you know, hey, what was really good about the old games? Well, let's incorporate that, you know, with some new modern techniques and blah, blah, blah. I, 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 dude, I, I swear I've seen them make that same video for the past 10 years. I digress. We questioned a lot of what was good about the movement of older games, what was good about the gunplay of older games, and the same with the newer games. So we tried to marry a lot of those things together. But when you're watching this video of them, you know, flipping the helicopter around, and you can mantle <laughs> like you couldn't before. Yeah, it, it's nostalgic, but we could have used that nostalgia in Modern Warfare 2, and you could have saved us a few shekels. I got no problem spending money on a good game, but like I said, we know the campaign's lazy. We know what the multiplayer maps are going to be. Now, I personally like Warzone. I don't, I don't, I haven't bought a Call of Duty for multiplayer in a while, but that doesn't negate the fact that a lot of people still do, right? A lot of people still like playing the campaign. They like playing multiplayer. And if you're going to leave that aspect in the game, you should be judged by those aspects that you have in the game. I've been playing Call of Duty since 2007. I've literally sunk thousands of hours into the game. 
And for the longest time, I said that there's no better value in gaming because for a single Call of Duty release, you get the campaign, zombies most of the time, and multiplayer. Then, of course, you have the addition of Warzone, DMZ. But just because you offer a decent value, which not a lot of games will give you, that doesn't mean you get to just cobble something together and call it a campaign. You know, if you ignore one of two aspects of this, just to focus on your bread and butter, just focus on the bread and butter. Focus on Warzone. I mean, it's obvious at this point, Warzone is not only driving Call of Duty, which I completely understand, but it's also driving some of the story missions as well. So now you're trying to introduce that aspect into the campaign. And a lot of people that like the campaign don't want anything to do with Warzone. <laughs> and I just find it lazy all the way around. Hell, the best part about this Call of Duty might be the zombies. You know, I mean, if you're not a Warzone player and you're getting a bunch of reworked Modern Warfare 2 maps that rightfully should have been in the last game, zombies might be your best hope. It looks pretty cool, but you know I don't know many people that buy this game for zombies either. So, I'll be honest with you, man. I'm really not shocked that this game is not being well received. Now, we know that Treyarch, Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer, none of these companies are going to come out and say, hey, this isn't being well received. We need to you know, change things up to give the people what they want. That, that's a nice gesture, but that's not realistic. The only thing that helps change these things for the betterment of the entire gaming community is when you hit them in their wallets because money is the universal language in which everybody responds. So here's my idea. Stop pre-ordering games. Stop letting these companies know that no matter what, we're still going to give you money. I just think that is the only way for the entire community and COD in general to ever get better is by us letting them know this is not acceptable. And like I said, things could change on Friday when the game drops, but I, I just don't see it, man. I just think this is a really expensive DLC. And it would be easy for me to gloat and say, hey, look at my video from a couple months ago where I talked about the same thing. But it's not fun for me to gloat because I like video games. And when people spend $70 on a video game and they're already upset with it, that sucks. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I'd love to hear yours. What do you think about this year's Call of Duty? Do you think it's lazy or am I totally off base here? Let me know. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, holding down.